I believe the church is a family. I believe it's meant to be a family of people that love each other. All we did in that Sunday school class was learn to really love each other. And it was blessed. It was fun. It was a great time. Now, I want to talk to you tonight about something that I'm not sure I can do very well, but I feel I have to. I was very sick a few years back, had a sea of white across my brain. I was having what they call petty mal seizures, and the doctor told me that they would develop into grand mal seizures, and I said, is this my exit strategy? And He said, I don't know, but he said, I can tell you that this is not good. And so I want to confess to you that God healed me. I ache in the church over the people who have been prayed for, who were sitting in the pews saying, not me, not me. And I want to let, if you will let me, I want to weave myself in to that experience with you. And if you would allow me, I want to coach you a little bit tonight. Is that all right with you? That's, that's what I want to try to do here. Now, I look at the Gospels of Jesus Christ, and I see a lot in there about faith. It all began, basically, with Abraham. God established a covenant relationship with him. He said, Abraham believed God, and it was reckoned to him with, as righteousness. I, uh, Noah, if you would put those three scriptures on the board in the New Testament that bear witness of what an important statement that was because they needed to go back and capture that and say, Abraham believed God, and here it is. That's not it, Noah. <laughs> Abraham believed God, and it was reckoned to him as righteousness. Thank you. Romans 4.3. Next. Galatians 3, 6. Next, James 2, 23. Woven into the Gospels, Abraham believed, and it was reckoned to him. Now, Jesus went about doing good and went on through all of Israel, all through Galilee. He went to the Sea of Galilee, to Capernaum, all these places he went, and Every time he touched somebody and healed them, what did he say? According to your faith, so be it unto you. Until he got to Nazareth. And what did he say when he got to Nazareth? He could not do many miracles there because of what? Their unbelief. I believe they had a little better opportunity than we did because Jesus was standing right in front of them. And if they said, if I can just reach out and touch his garment, if I can just drop me down through the ceiling, if you can just let me call to him and say, Son of God, that my eyes, that they might be open. And in every one of those places, Jesus said it over and over and over again. According to your faith, so be it unto you. Now, Christians, we get prayed for, and we walk away. And right at the point that our work should be starting, I believe we quit working. So I want, I want to capture you right there. Two words, I I was a student of Greek when I was in college. I've never gotten away from my love of Greek. There are two words in in the New Testament in Greek, kai agenita. Now, these are the koine Greek letters, kappa, alpha, iota, epsilon, gamma, epsilon, nu, epsilon, ta, omicron. Kai agenita. Those words say 
it happened. They appear 202 times in the New Testament. You say, why didn't it appear in the Old Testament? Because they didn't speak Greek in the Old Testament. It's Hebrew they spoke <laughs> over there. <laughs> but if they appear this many times in the New Testament, it is because it is indication that Jesus spoke a word and something happened. Jesus prayed for someone and something happened. And it happened. Is It's translated many ways in, in the English language, and it came to pass, and a, a whole bunch of different things. But what he's saying to you and me is, if Jesus spoke, if Jesus spoke it, something happened. At that very minute, something happened. And dead Lazarus rose up out of the grave. It's a good thing he called Lazarus out of the grave. If he had said, come forth, everybody had walked out. Now, Christians... I want to start, if I can, with a story. I'm trying to get God's position straight here. There was a man who was in the army whose heritage in the army had been great. His father, his grandfather, his great-grandfather had all been in the army. It so happened that this young man found himself dishonorably discharged from the army. He didn't know what he could do. He didn't know what he could say. But he said, my dad's going to find out anyway. I might as well tell him. And so he sat down and wrote his dad a letter and said, Dad, I want you to know how sorry I am that I've brought dishonor on our family and I have been dishonorably discharged from the army. The next day, after the father got the letter, the son got a telegram. It had three sentences on it. I still love you, son. Don't forget who you are. I'll be there in the morning. Now, I tell you that story as a way of illustrating how very much God is on our side. How very incredibly he is for us and wants us to make it. I grew up in a church where the Lord wrote my name in the Lamb's Book of Life in in pencil, and there's a hole in the page where my name was because I backslid so many times, I'm going to erase her and rub it out. It took me a long time to learn that God is on my side and that God wants me to make it. God's looking for a way to show me the way through and to perform everything he said in his word in my life. Now, I heard these words from this doctor, and I'll have to admit I walked out pretty devastated. First thing I did was I went and got somebody to pray for me. That's all I know to do. So I happened to see Mike Campbell and I said, Come here, pray for me. This is what the doctor's diagnosed. I'm in real trouble here. I need somebody to pray for me. He said, I'd be glad to pray for you. Now, I I didn't even know what I was doing. I wasn't for, I wasn't writing a prescription for healing. I wasn't doing any of this. And I want to tell you exactly what I did. Before I said this to you, I want you to know I called Doug Jones. Do you even know who Doug Jones is? He's, Doug Jones is the Rama healing pastor. And I said, I want to make sure this is sound theology before I say this to anybody. He said, Richard, it's sound. Preach it. Every day in the morning, I'd get up and I would drive to work. It's about a two and a half mile drive down to my shop from my house real close. And the whole way there, I would say, Father, I thank you that the prayer of faith has been healed. It has been prayed for me. I thank you the word of God is working in my life. I thank you, Lord, you've healed me. I don't feel it. I don't see it. But, Lord, I know it's true, and I want to thank you that you're working in me. And I receive my healing in the name of Jesus. And I, something like that, I did Every single morning for months. One morning, one morning, 
as I was doing this on the way to work, it hit me like a lightning bolt. Lord, I didn't believe you. It's just like all of a sudden in my spirit, I knew it. Just like that, I knew it. We had made somewhere back there a trip to the Mayo. We got finally got in, got an appointment at the Mayo, and made an appointment. And you make an appointment at the Mayo, it's going to be a few months before you go. Terry had grown somewhat frustrated with me because I was walking really slow. Now, all my life, I've been running off and leaving her, and all of a sudden, I was walking really slow. As we walked over, you know, there in Rochester, Minnesota, to the Mayo, the night we got there just to see where the place was that we had to show up, I was walking over. And Terry said to me, Richard, you're walking faster. And I said, Terry, I feel better. The next four days, they put me through everything you could possibly imagine. And we sat down with the doctor at the end, and he said, there's no thing. Now, listen to me, people. I could have gone home and sat down and said, Mike prayed for me and nothing happened. And I guess it just isn't my turn. And I guess I just didn't get it. But Christians, I believe when someone prays for you to be healed, your work has just started. We are, we are a trichotomy. Body, soul, and spirit. Flesh, mind, and the spirit of God alive in us. My mind is the most corruptible entity ever created on the earth. It will convince itself that everything is wrong. Where does my doubt begin? I've got to get locked onto the Spirit of God. Christians, this is what I'm telling you. Listen to me very carefully. When you get prayed for, for healing, you start confessing that healing with all that is in you. I don't care if you don't believe it. Confess it anyway, because the whole idea is you're going to believe it if you keep doing it. If you keep trying and keep confessing God, He can work in your body. You confess it until you know it's true in your what? Spirit and in your mind. Let the Spirit of God reach into that mind, and tell you that it's true. Christians, we've got to reach out there and grasp it and bring it to us. We've got to confess God and keep confessing God and let him work in our body because of the according to your faith be it unto you. Now, listen to me very carefully. If I ever hear anybody that says you weren't healed, because you didn't have enough faith. You and I are going to take it outside. But Christians, if we can get to work at that point of being prayed for, start confessing God. Now, I believe the opposite of faith is self-sufficiency. I worked on this church. I didn't do all that much. Had a couple of staff come over, and I watched them pretty good. I didn't do all that much. But I, I just believed that we were going to do what had to be done. And I, somewhere in there, I began believing we can do it. And in that one moment, became self-sufficient. And I just believe maybe during that season, locked off faith for self-sufficiency. I had to go back to God and say, Lord, I, I repent. I repent, Lord, because I, 
yeah, I did some work, and yeah, we did some things, and we had a wonderful time together, and it was a good experience, and, and we got worn out with it and got frustrated with it and kept going, and, and it got done. And there were, and you were all there. Uh, so you all know exactly what I'm talking about because we did all this together. That self-sufficient moment, I believe, is almost a curse unto us. Because it, we weren't saying, Lord, we can't do this if you don't show us how. We can't get it done if you don't do, us, do it in us. Lord. We just said, I'm going to do my part. We're going to get this done. I had to repent of my self-sufficiency. I, for a short season, lost my morning walk presence of the Holy Spirit. I, I walk about two and a half miles every morning. I just get out and walk real hard, and it's, it's what I do. I don't know why. I guess because my Apple Watch tells me I did good if I do that. <laughs> but as I walk, that's my prayer time. And I just tell the Lord what he means to me. I don't give him a bunch of agenda. I just say, Lord, I want to have fellowship with you today. Lord, can I walk with you this morning? Can I walk in fellowship with you today? And I feel the Holy Spirit just settle in on me and touch my heart, and touch my spirit. And it's just like I'm gliding down the street with God. Christians, if you hear anything I say, hear this. Know the Holy Spirit and get attached to him. Know him in fellowship and get attached to him. Talk to him. Pray to him. Thank him for what he's doing. Thank him that he's healing your body. Thank you that even before your body knows it, he's working in here. And thank God that he's going to do this. Now, I've got to tell you, if we had not, if, we, if I had known this ahead of time, we'd never been to the Mayo. Never have gone. Never have had this incredible moment where I knew God healed me. Walking across, they got these walkways where you don't go outside. You walk across from building to building because it's so cold up there in Minnesota. I don't anybody be crazy enough to live up there anyway. Get down here where you can sweat a little bit. It's a whole lot better. <laughs> the power of the gospel is not in the pew. The power of the gospel is in a Christian's relationship to a loving God. People, relationship. Walk in fellowship with him. Get to know him. Talk to him. Let him know that you care. Let him reach down and touch you. I promise you it will happen, but you've got to make the effort to try. And as you do, you will teach yourself to believe. You can learn how by practicing. Thank you, Lord, that you're working in me. Thank you, Lord, that you're healing my body. I thank you, Lord, that you said your word, that you would heal the sick. And I thank you, Lord, I know it even now that you're healing my body. Oh, gosh, can't you just feel the Holy Spirit touching you right now saying, what's wrong with you? Just start thanking me for it. Thanking me for my healing word. Thanking me that I'm bigger than what's the matter. Thank me that I am everything you need to be alive and well. Christians, you wonderful brothers and sisters, is it a theology? Is it a methodology? I don't know. I don't like how-to stuff in church. <laughs> I don't like how to get this or how to get over there from over here. I just like truth, and I want real Thank you for real. Thank you for the true word. Thank you that it reaches me. I want to ask you, how many of you in this room have been prayed for to be healed? How many of you have been prayed for and didn't get what you prayed for? I want to ask you not to quit. Don't you quit. Don't you quit. Thank God for what he's doing over and over and over again. 
get to the believing. Where is the doubt? Where is the doubt? It's in my mind, people. The doubt lives in my human, deceivable mind. We know, we know. James thirteen, James five thirteen. You there? No, thank you. Is anyone among you suffering? Let him pray. Is anyone cheerful? Let him sing songs. Is one any one among you sick? Let him call for the elders of the church. Let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith will save the sick, and the Lord will raise him up. Hebrews eleven sixteen. Without faith, it's impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he's a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Matthew chapter 8, verse 10. This is the Roman centurion. When Jesus heard it, he marveled and said to those who followed, Assuredly, I say to you, I have not found such great faith even in Israel. Matthew 13, 54 to 28, it tells of, of Jesus coming into his own country and couldn't do many miracles there because of their unbelief. Now, this is an important statement. Hear me. This is not mind over matter. This is faith over mind. People, faith over mind. God over this deceivable entity, faith over mind. Confess him, he comes and takes dominion as you do. Faith comes to you because you've reached out and praised him and thanked him. People, it can do it. Get to a believing posture with God. That's all I'm asking you to do. Maybe you do it some other way. Maybe you build a fire and sit down and, and, and just wait to, for God to, to show up. I don't know what you do, but I tell you, I, in this one moment in my life, I found that as I confess God, I stir belief in my spirit. And as I stir belief in my spirit, God awakens in me what I need to receive because I believe it comes. I know there's somebody out there saying, yeah, but not me. And I'm going to say to you, yeah, even you, even you, even you can receive from God everything you need to be healed. Even you, 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 all of you. Even you can get everything you need from God to be well. 